Hi, my name's Todd Kendall, and I want to say I'm grateful to the Heartland Institute for inviting me here and giving me the opportunity to speak to you all, um, and also to my fellow panelists for their uh, fascinating uh, presentations. Um, following up on where Rochelle sort of ended things with the fossil fuel movement on campus, uh, my sense is, and I think it certainly is the case, that the next frontier in the fossil fuel divestment movement is with respect to public pensions. Um, and so I'm going to uh, speak a little bit, summarize uh, some of the research that some colleagues and I have done on fossil fuel divestment and the economics of it in the context of, of public pension funds. And I want to say that one of the exciting things for me about this research program is really that it's, um, it's not based on some sort of opaque economic model where you never know whether somebody has put their finger on the scale one way or another. Uh, nor is it um, a matter of opinion where economists on the right and those on the left may uh, disagree as a matter of principle, but it's really just the application of some sort of economics 101, finance 101 sort of principles um, to an important issue, and it doesn't really require a PhD in economics to understand them or to, to come to the same conclusions. Um, and so as an economist, I think in terms of costs and benefits, and so I'm going to talk about some of the costs of fossil fuel divestment, which are really very clear and indisputable. I suppose some people could argue about whether the costs are relatively large or relatively small, but everybody would agree that there are these costs. And then talk about what, what benefits uh, fossil fuel divestment might have. Um, and again, the, the economics of it is very clear that uh, essentially there, there are no benefits at, at best, um, you know, possibly highly speculative benefits. And then I want to give you a, a sense of what those costs uh, a public pension fund actually would face from divesting. Um, and so, moving on. Uh, so the first category of costs uh, that a a anybody in performing a fossil fuel divestment is going to incur, including a, a public pension fund, is loss diversification. And this reflects like the number one principle of investment, maybe the only principle really of investment, which is to diversify your portfolio. Um, taught in every uh, finance class, every investment textbook, uh, and diversifying your portfolio, having the, the broadest range of possible securities in your portfolio maximizes returns for a given amount of risk. And so if you're divesting from fossil fuels, you're excluding from your portfolio necessarily a big chunk of the economy. Um, and there's a cost to that. There's a lost diversification, uh, a lost element of hedging that you're giving up. And in fact, uh, the energy industry is uh, a particularly good hedge, a particularly valuable diversification benefit because um, it tends to move less in, in, in tandem, in correlation with the rest of the economy relative to other sectors, for the reason that when oil and, oil and gas prices go up, that's usually good for oil and gas companies for obvious reasons, and it's often bad for many other companies because their costs of energy and, and gasoline and so forth go up. And so uh, my colleagues and I did a little study uh, of, of just how correlated um, and what the, the hedging benefit is uh, of, of 10 different sectors of the economy. Uh, the correlation here is a, is a standard statistical uh, measure, and lower is better in terms of diversification benefits. Um, and energy is the number one um, uh, hedge on the rest of the economy, the number one uh, part of your portfolio that generates the greatest diversification benefit for just the reason that, that, I, that I just mentioned. So if you're divesting from fossil fuels, you're giving up that benefit. Again, this is really finance 101. Nobody can, can dispute that. I'll, I'll circle back at the end to give you a sense of what the, the dollar figure cost for some of these uh, pension funds would be from that. Um, second big category of costs, um, again, anybody who has an investment portfolio knows that if you want to buy and sell stocks or in other assets, it's not free. You have to pay fees. There's a bid-ask spread. There's price impact of trades. There's trade processing costs. And that's true for public pension funds as well. If they're going to sell off a bunch of stocks or bonds associated with fossil fuel companies and presumably buy other assets to replace them, it's not free. Um, and so again, we did a little study looking at what those costs would be for, for, for equities, for stocks. You're talking about something like 32 basis points, 0.32% of the value of the asset that you're selling off. Uh, for fixed income, something around eight basis points. And then when you look at, uh, it was to me very interesting, when you look at the actual holdings a lot of, of a lot of these public pension funds, a lot of what they hold is in the form of commingled funds 
mutual funds um, and alternative equities such as private equity, hedge funds, and the like. Um, and those can be great investments, but the downside is that they're not very liquid. And so you own a portion of a, public e of a private equity fund and you say, I want to sell it off because I'm doing a fossil fuel divestment. Well, there's not a liquid market out there to buy that asset. And so you're going to have to take a substantial haircut um, in order to, to offload that asset. And 10% of the value of the, of, of the asset is not an unusual uh, amount. That's 1,000 basis points. So that's one of the reasons, maybe the big reason, why a lot of these uh, colleges and universities chose not to divest. It, they just, when they looked at the numbers, it was just too costly, as much as they might ideally like to do it. Um, and then very quickly, a third cost of, of divestment um, is just the ongoing year after year monitoring cost, which just basically again reflects basic principle that people don't work for free. You have people running public pension funds, asset managers, and you're asking them to keep an eye on the assets in the fund to, to maximize returns and to keep risk under control. You have to pay them for that. And if you now also tell them, I want you to keep an eye on the uh, carbon footprint of all these companies and their environmental in impact, that's additional work, and they're going to ask for money to do that work. Um, and for that reason, funds, uh, mutual funds and other funds that, that do take those factors into account, socially conscious funds that focus on the environment, generally charge higher expense ratios, controlling for other factors. We did a lot of comparisons in one of our studies. This is just one of them, looking at passive funds that have a uh, socially conscious aspect, environmental aspect, versus equivalent ones that do not. And the expense ratios are higher. Um, and that, again, sort of indisputable that people don't work for free. You're going to have to pay them to do something, um, whether you think that thing is valuable or not. Um, so the costs, I think, are sort of indisputable, very clear, concrete, and real. So let's talk about what the benefits are. Costs are fine. If the benefits are also sufficiently large, then so be it. Um, so what are the potential benefits from divestment? One is, well, you know, maybe um, what you hear sometimes is everybody knows, you know, quote unquote, everybody knows that the fossil fuel industry is doomed, that people are turning to green en energy, consumers prefer it, uh, the government is going to regulate these companies out of business, and so better to get out now while the getting's good um, and not wait for Exxon and Shell and BP to, to go out of business and, and you lose all your money. Maybe, could be. Um, I'm, I'm not a, a securities analyst. But what I do know is that basic economic theory and 50 years of financial practice says that um, what everybody knows is already incorporated into the price of the stock or the other asset. Um, <clears throat> you don't get rich in the stock market by knowing what everybody knows. The only way you get rich is by knowing what people don't know, um, for having some, some sort of insider information. Um, <clears throat> and in this case, nobody is claiming that they know something that, that other people don't know. Um, and so, you know, 50 years of financial economics empirical work has shown you just, you cannot beat the market. And, and, it's, uh, and you certainly can't beat the market by reading the New York Times or reading the Wall Street Journal. Um, so maybe that's not the point. Maybe the point is that we can somehow, through divestment, put pressure on BP and Shell and Exxon to, to behave differently, to invest less in oil and gas and, and invest more in wind or, or, or some other green energy. And again, the basic economics of of that is how does that change the, uh, the risk of the portfolio. And then risk adjust, because I want to be clear, what I'm, not, what I'm saying is not that because fossil fuel stocks have performed well in the past, they must also perform well in the future. That would be financial malpractice. The past is not a predictor of the future in finance. But what we are looking at is just that hedging value, that loss diversification cost that you give up when you divest from a major sector of the economy, such as fossil fuels. So we're risk adjusting these returns. And what we find is that for a, for a fund that has holdings like CalPERS, the, the large pension fund in California, the annual cost of divestment is about 14 basis points, 0.14%. Um, yeah, other, other pension funds, depending on their holdings, can be higher or lower. An average number is about 0.15%. Uh, which doesn't sound that big, and it's not if you're talking about one year. If we're divesting for one year, then maybe the cost isn't so great. Um, it's, it's something, but, but not, not everything. However, these are, these are long-term institutions that are intended to fund uh, beneficiaries over 50 or 100 years. And so when you look at these numbers over long periods of time, uh, you know, by, the by the magic of compounding, you get some really big losses. Um, so for instance, in the case of CalPERS, 
the annual cost of divestment they would expect based on 50 years of, of, of financial data is about $210 million, which sounds like a lot until you realize that CalPERS has $145 billion in assets. Um, however, $210 million every year for 50 years through the magic of compounding leads to losses on the order of about $2.3 trillion with a T dollars. That's either losses, reduced benefits for, for pension retirees, or else you're going to have to shore up the pension fund with greater numbers from taxpayers, greater dollars from taxpayers. Um, and that's true for, for all of the pension funds we've looked at. Um, you're talking about between 6 and 10% uh, loss of value. So the bottom line on, on, on public pension fund divestment from, a, from an economic standpoint is clear and concrete costs, speculative and most likely zero benefits. I like to think of, of, of fossil fuel divestment as like, a, uh, as like a bumper sticker. Lots of people have bumper stickers. I don't. I never really understood bumper stickers, but people have them. It's a form of self-expression, and that's great. But if, you're, if the bumper sticker is gold-plated, it's a really expensive bumper sticker, and you don't personally have to pay the cost of that bumper sticker, that raises a lot of costs. And that's exactly what fossil fuel divestment is in the context of public pension funds. So thanks very much. Thank you.